Hey everybody, I wanna give you three quick things you can do right now to make the most of this gathering, of this experience online together. Number one, I want you to share this video. Whatever platform you might be watching on, Facebook, YouTube, Church Online, depending on what church you go to, you're on one of those platforms. And right now I would ask you, before we jump into the gathering, please share this post. Let other people know, your friends, people that know you on social media, know what you're doing because that's the best way to invite them in and let them know you can join in from your home. Please be a part of what's happening. So number one, please share this post right now. Number two, I want you to subscribe. Uh, if you go to your church's YouTube page, you can always press the subscribe button. And subscribing really means I'm all in and I want you to let me know anytime you put up new content because there's stuff happening throughout the week at all the churches in our wonderful church network and I wanna make sure you don't miss it. So please go to your church's YouTube page, press subscribe and be in the know anytime something happens on that platform. And number three, I want you to post about it. Please make a post today or this week letting people know that you watched this content, that you found it valuable. So more people can come and find it later and rewatch a message or listen to some music or whatever that happens to be. If it was meaningful to you, please post about it so other people can come and find it. Let's jump into service in just a few minutes.
As we prepare for our gathering today, I wanted to share with you an encouragement that just because plans may have changed, it doesn't mean that your dreams have to change. These are unprecedented times, but unprecedented times call for out-of-the-box leaders. And at the Eastlake Leadership College, we remain committed to training the next generation of leaders who want to find their passion and serve their community and earn their degree. We would love to start the conversation with you. You can email me, amanda at eastlake.college, or go online and check out our programs, eastlake.college. And if you know someone who has a student who could use this information, we would love for you to share it out just like we share our gatherings. Every student, high school and middle school, can still be growing in their faith during this season. That's why we've launched something called Students United, and it's all on YouTube. So go on YouTube, type in Students United, and subscribe to our channel. On the channel, you will find new content every single week for middle school and high school. The content is jam-packed full of amazing sermons, engaging games, and fun hosts. Middle school is on Saturday nights, high school is on Wednesday nights, and I cannot wait to see you there this week. Born to be wild, born to be free. I'll always be here as long as you're standing right next to me. Adventure will take us into the unknown. Look straight ahead, cause forward's the only way to go Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe it's something special It's something special Oh, and I know what's the best, it could be nothing to question We want to make sure you are aware of all the great things we have going on across our church network. The two best ways to do that are by checking out our website and also following us along on our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram. On those pages, you'll find out everything from events, activities, outreach opportunities, and so much more. We hope you enjoy the service. Here with the squad 
trying to go, yeah, the party jumping off, and we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe. We do hey, everyone, I want to invite you to check out Kids United. Kids United is an online service experience for you and everyone in your family. Kids United is a place where you can have fun, and it's also a place where you can learn more about God and connect with your family during the weekend. Make sure that you look for us in YouTube. Our channel is Kids United. Subscribe and check out the new content that comes out every Saturday at 10 a.m. I will see you there. This is where I want to stay. I could do this every day. Party, make a toast. It's a party every day. So, anywhere you go, all across the coast, we do it every time. Like, nah, 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 nah. I got nothing but the highlights. Can't believe that this is my life. I'm only living on the bright side. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Phil. Welcome to our online services. We have some awesome music coming up, some great announcements. We have an amazing message from Pastor Mark, and then we have some more awesome music as well. So strap yourselves in and let's go. Weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it arise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lifts him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. Let faith be the song that overcomes the rage and sea. Let faith be the song that comes the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Hope you cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lifts him high. With all creation, cry, God, we praise you. Oh, oh, oh. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. 
this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, if you cannot survive, when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, Friends, before I turn this over to Sam and Holly for some announcements and upcoming events that are going on, I wanted to just take a moment and say thank you. Thank you for being faithful to God. Thank you for partnering with our church in your giving and in your generosity. Um, I wanted to, to say that myself. You may have received a, a mailer and it talked about uh, all the things that we've been able to accomplish this past year through the Christmas offering. The Christmas offering of last year forward funded all the initiatives we had for 2020. And we've been able to keep them going. We didn't stop and it's because of you. So whether that's our, our global missions or our local outreaches, doing ministry, the services, all of it, we've been able to keep going and grow and move and see people get saved. Read that mailer. It's, it's gonna make you smile. It's pretty cool, the things that have happened. And I wanted to say thank you for that. We're in this together. Thank you for your faithfulness. There's a scripture I wanted to read in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7 says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you for that. Thank you for sowing in abundance and being a blessing in a time that could be scary and you've been faithful. And I pray that God return that to you in abundance. If you're able to give today, if you're ready to give today, you know the drill, this is how we do it nowadays, and that's text generosity to 67076 or visit our website and give that way but let me pray for you let me pray that God return to you the, the the same generosity that you've been given to us father I thank you that uh, you've called us to participate in kingdom mission through serving and through giving through our prayers all of it Lord and I wanna thank you, Lord, for putting such faithfulness in the hearts of your people. I pray that it would come back to them, Lord. Bless their families, bless their health. Be with them, Lord. And I, we pray and ask together, collectively, that you would help us to accomplish the things for 2021 that you've put in our hearts, God. Moving your mission forward, Lord. You are our provider, you are our source. And so we look to you for that, and we thank you for it, Lord. And bless the remainder of this service as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another wonderful online service. Now, we are gonna continue our online services, but in addition to those, we are starting our courtyard in-person services today. 
November 1st, we have two services at 9.30 and at 4 p.m. So depending on when you're watching, it is not too late to register to come to one of those. So we'd love to have you. These are going to continue for the entire month of November. So come out, join us, worship together in person. Now, you do have to register for any of the services that you want to attend. So please, it's easy. Just go to our website, venice.church slash events and register there. We won't have childcare, but whoever can come, please come and worship with us. Yes, and for those of you who are new to Venice Church, I hope you've noticed something. It's that we are constantly striving to grow in our faith, our relationship with God in new and fresh ways. Now we recently introduced our app, the Prayer Walk app, and that is a helpful tool to help track as you walk through your neighborhood and pray. Pastor Mark actually sent out a challenge to our church recently asking everyone to go out into your neighborhoods, into your cities, and jog, walk, run, whatever. But while you're doing so, pray. Pray for your neighborhood, pray for the people that live in them. Now, as of today, we actually have logged, I believe it is, uh, somewhere just under 12 hours and over 45 miles so far. So way to go, everyone. Good job. Now, if you don't have the app, go ahead and do yourself a favor and download the app. Join us. You can get it anywhere you download the apps on your smartphone and, and, and really join us as we pray for the people in our neighborhood. Now. The second plug, or the next plug that I have, it only applies to those of you who are watching this. On Sunday morning, we have a prayer in the park gathering happening today. It's at 2 p.m. at Clover Park. We're meeting in the northwest corner of the park. And what we're doing, we're praying. We're getting together and praying, specifically for people, for our leaders, our city, and ultimately that people's hearts will be turned toward God. So join us for that. Yes, it's gonna be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Real good time. All right, so we've been telling you guys about some service projects that have been going on over the past few weeks. And we want to do a shout out to one of our growth groups. I love to see how creative these growth groups are getting with their service projects. So one of the groups got together and they packaged 116 hygiene essentials kits for people in need in our community. They also packaged together about a dozen uh, backpacks for kids with hygiene essentials and school supplies. They donated scarves to people in our community in need. It was just a great time. They came together and they really served our community. They partnered with Westside Thanksgiving Dinner and a local uh, South Central Los Angeles mission. So thank you guys. Thank you for serving. Thank you to everyone who has come out over the last few weeks and served and really served over the last few months during all this crazy time. So thank you guys. I'm always so proud of what our Venice families and our Venice members do. So thanks guys. All right, Sam, is that it? Um, I think you're forgetting some, Holly. What? Boom! The Dodgers won! Yes. All right, congratulations, <laughs> LA Dodgers. Yes, thank you to our hometown boys for bringing home the big W. All right, I think that's it now. That is it, <laughs> finally. All right, we're jumping into week seven of our series with Stronger Together. Let's do it. Hey, welcome to week seven of our With series. I've really enjoyed the series. We, we came out of three weeks where we were looking at service, right? Being stronger together in our service. And now we're wrapping up the mid portion, which is three weeks talking about prayer. We're stronger together in prayer. And I wanna jump right in. It's a, it's a big topic this morning. We're talking about something called spiritual warfare, right? Spiritual battle. And when you mention something like that, People generally have one or two polarized views. Either there's no such thing as the devil or an evil one, or everything, every negative thing that happens seems to be or blamed on the devil, right? It's like your car engine freezes and it's the devil's fault, even though you haven't put oil in the car for the past two years. C.S. Lewis, that wonderful author, philosopher, uh, he said it this way. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. So he's saying if you disbelieve 
in the devil, that's going to blind you to his reality and the reality of an evil one. And if you believe that everything is caused by the devil, you're going to be making a mistake that keeps you so distracted. So either mistake he is saying suits the devil's purposes just fine. Now we've been looking at a passage in Matthew chapter 6, commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Or if you were raised Catholic, like my wife, then you might know it as the Our Father. And uh, I want to read this, we've done it each week, read it together out loud. So you ready? Let's get this in our heads and our minds. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Jesus is responding here, set the context, he's responding to a question they asked. Will you teach us how to pray? They knew prayer was essential. It was critical to live the life that he was living. That was his source. That was his connection. And so they said, will you teach us how to pray? And he said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So you notice that final sentence, that's where we're camping out today. Let's look at it again. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So Jesus certainly believed in the identity of an evil one. And it was important enough for him to mention it in this prayer, in this outline of when he was teaching them how to pray. There's only, you know, four sentences in this prayer. And addressing spiritual warfare, addressing the enemy was something he considered critical enough to bring it into this prayer. So I want to pay attention to it. And the reason that we need to address this is kind of your first fill in there if you're taking notes. We often don't take the presence of the evil one seriously, right? And that can be for a variety of reasons. You've seen people abuse that statement, blame everything on the devil, or you had some kind of an image of the devil from childhood where he's like this red dude in a red robe and, you know, bearded and horns and a pitchfork, like that guy right there. Well, I think if you believe in God and the scriptures teach you about God, you must also believe in the presence of an evil one, the devil, whatever you want to call him. Right, And I think if we all really have our eyes wide open and we look at some of the things that are going on in the world, we can honestly say, yeah, there definitely seems to be the presence of evil in our world. Now, Satan or the devil, the evil one, he has a certain mission, just like Jesus does. He has an agenda. He has a purpose. And Jesus was teaching his disciples and he told them, look, this is what the enemy is after. This is what I'm after. John 10.10, 10. he says, the thief, another reference to the enemy, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. And so I think if we're honest, we have all seen this, whether it's been in our lives or the lives of somebody that we care about, that the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And we see that. And I'm not saying we absolve people or ourselves from bad choices that we made and, and suffer the consequences, but you see this sometimes where there seems to be this attack, this assault, this oppression of evil on somebody's life that is just seeking to destroy. And you may have known this personally right? We can go, this is, this is not ordinary. There's the presence of something dark here that is out to destroy, to kill, to steal from this person or from this family. And when we look at our world and just our history and we, we look at some of the evil happenings, we could see, if we're honest, again, if we're just having eyes open saying, no, there's something beyond human, there's something evil behind this. When you think about the Holocaust, you see evil, I mean, just evil, personified evil. When you think about the Rwanda genocide of 1994, that's evil. The devil is involved in these things, right? When you think about and we witness the school shootings, this is evil. There is an evil presence in this world. When you think about some of the, the happenings that are still going on, the, the, the human trafficking, the the sexual exploitation of children. This is evil. There is a presence of evil. So what do we do about it? 
How do we, how do we face this? How do we approach this? How do we not deny, and yet how do we not get so crazy that we see him behind every negative thing? What do we do? Jesus is asking us to involve God in the battle against evil. Now, the battle against evil is often called spiritual warfare, which is, I know, a phrase that people can kind of struggle with. Warfare seems like a, a pretty aggressive term. Here's a simple definition, listen to this, of spiritual warfare. Here, really what it is. The conflict in the spiritual realm that affects the physical realm. So there are certainly other words that could be used uh, other than warfare. I know there's people who struggle with words like battle and warfare because it seems so violent and they know their faith as something that is uh, calming and something that is peaceful and brings rest. And I, I really do get that. I understand that. But we want to understand this, that, that if, if, even if you're committed to peace, if somebody declares war on you, you're in war. We've seen this throughout history. If another country or a city-state declares war on their neighboring territory, that neighboring territory can't say, oh, you know, I just, I'm not into the whole war thing. You know, I just, I, I pass on the, on the war thing. I'm not into the battle thing. Look, if somebody declares war, you're in war. If somebody's bringing conflict to you, even if you're saying, I'm not into conflict, there's still conflict. And so we find ourselves in a spiritual warfare. It's, 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 it's real if we're looking at it. I, I was thinking when I first really, you know, came to grips with, gosh, the devil is real. The, the evil is real. Many of you who know my story know that uh, when I was a young man, I was incarcerated for a couple of years. And the, the, because of my own, you know, uh, stupidity and bad choices and mistakes and, and things that I did. So I was incarcerated for a couple of years. And while I was in there, uh, my eyes were open to see there's, there's the presence of evil here. I would watch. I would watch how the enemy of our souls pitted this person against this person who, who hyped up accusations and lies in this group against this group and behaviors and acts of violence and random stuff. And I would, I would watch some of this stuff go on and, and just see how it's almost like the enemy talking to this group and then this one and coming together. And it was go, there is a presence of evil. There is an evil one who has an intention and he was out to destroy. And he does that not in just you know prison yards, he does that in families. And so what we want to be equipped with is to know, okay, there, he's a reality. I may not take him seriously or I may have ignored the reality, but what do I do as a result of it? So I want to give you three guidelines that we're going to look at this morning. Okay, this is, a, I believe, a healthy response to an evil reality that is out there. And we see it. We see it today. Here's number one, guidelines for prayers of spiritual warfare. Number one is know your enemy. Knowing your enemy is simply an acknowledgement that we have some sense of what we're up against, right? And what we are up against is actually out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We want to know our enemy, to wake up to that, right? Look at the words of Peter. He says it's in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. He says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now the encouragement or the call here is clear. It says, you know, be alert, be of sober mind. He's saying, be awake, be, be ready, not looking for a devil behind everything, but be aware. This is our reality. Why? Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. And we're going to talk about that roaring, what that implies a little bit later on, but most of what the enemy is doing is speaking, is roaring into your mind, accusations, lying, lies, and he's prowling around, roaring, seeking someone to devour, looking for someone to devour. That is a word, catapino, which means he's looking for somebody to swallow up. That's what, that's what that means. He's roaring, speaking these things, doing these things, looking for someone to swallow up or to devour. Uh, 
vernacular you may choose and often say is to overwhelm. You ever feel that? That it's just being overwhelmed with the thoughts, with the, with the war that is raging on inside here, looking to devour. When I was incarcerated, that's when I first realized that the enemy was real, that there was, there was the presence of evil, truly. Uh, about a year after I was released, I enrolled in Bible college. And that's when I first really engaged in sp spiritual warfare. And it wasn't something that was going on violence in the yard of a penitentiary. It was something that was going on in my own brain. I felt a, I, was, I was the new guy. I'm in this school. You know, a year prior, I had been incarcerated. And I'd done things that I'm very ashamed of. And here I was with all these people and young people like myself, but they just seemed better than me. It was, it was something I struggled with a lot. I mean, my goodness, they had ties. I had tattoos. <laughs> Some of them were carrying briefcases. I couldn't even imagine that. And I just felt like, I felt like they were at a different level than me. They knew the Bible better. They were more equipped for this life of ministry. And I remember the enemy, especially that first year, he would speak to me and say, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're going to fail again. You're going to go back to what you've known. And I would, I would get overwhelmed with those thoughts. These people are above you. You're not going to make it. You're not smart enough. You're not spiritual enough. All these things. And it became, because I was just listening to that, and I was accepting it because he had proof, right? The lies of the enemy always have something kind of proof in history to pull to. And so I was getting overwhelmed with these thoughts until this happened. I realized the second point, and that was, it was essential for me, it's going to be essential for some of you, is I only knew that the enemy was real, but I needed to know my authority. You need to know your authority. That's the only way to combat this, know your authority. Knowing your authority has everything to do with knowing who you are in Christ, and more importantly, whose you are, who you belong to. That's where your authority comes from. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. You are a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. When I gave my life to Christ, and this is what is so important about baptism, symbolically, is that the old man dies. It's a watery grave, and the new creation comes up. Meaning you have a new identity as a son of God. The enemy was attacking me. Right? He was coming after me and attacking me, and he was attacking me based upon who I was. And I had to learn to respond with, yeah, that's who I was, but this is who I am. And this authority and this newness and this power that Christ has has now been given over to me to know my authority so I can have a stance to combat these lies and accusations that he was bringing my way. Ephesians 6 says this, Paul is talking to them, he says, this is a final word. It's like he's saying, pay attention to this one right here. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Stop right there for a second. Because so often we try to live that out by saying, okay, I need to be strong for God in my power. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to try harder, right? How's that working? It doesn't work. He says, be strong in the Lord, your place in Christ, who you belong to, and in his mighty power. He has the power. The power I'm able to execute is only because I'm attached to him. I'm the vine attached to him, right? Or he's the vine, I'm the branch attached to him. And that's where the power comes from. And then he says, put on all of God's armor so that, put on the armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. He has strategies, different ways to try to take us out. And so then he, he goes on and he encourages us by telling this is what the armor is. Obviously, these are metaphors. Don't go buy a suit of armor. All right? But here, here's what they are. And I'm going to go over them real quickly. But read these um, on your own this week as well. He says, put on the belt of truth. It's the only thing that can combat a lie. The belt of truth, who you are. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. That My righteousness does not come from how well I'm doing. My righteousness comes that I belong to him. I am robed with his righteousness. Your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The shield of faith 
faith. The helmet of salvation. I am a new creation. My mind, that helmet covers my mind. I'm a new creation. I'm adopted into the family of God. I am saved. The old has passed away. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see, what this does is this concept of being clothed in Christ. I don't just be try to be strong for God. It just doesn't work. And I'm not called to be. I'm called to be strong in God clothed in Christ from head to toe. Second Corinthians, Paul says something crazy. And this leads us into our third uh, point of knowing how to fight. Because I know my authority. I belong to him. That's where my authority comes from. He's the reality. I've got, I've got my, my claim as a child of God. And that's the place I stand and the position I stand in. Now, how do I actually fight? and engage in spiritual warfare in a correct way, right? Not getting crazy and weird, but in a correct way to engage in spiritual warfare, which everyone is in warfare. If you are not battling, you are losing. There is warfare every day in your mind. Okay, so how do we do this? Second Corinthians, he says this, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. Stop right there again. Because how many times we see ourselves, somebody says this to us, or this goes on, and we start fighting with the weapons of this world. We slander, we yell, we curse, we fight, we get violent. We use the weapons of this world, and Paul is saying, hey, come on, there's a higher way. There's another way to do this. The weapons, because we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? It's also in Ephesians 6, where it talks about the armor of God. Our wrestle is not against just other human beings, flesh and blood, but it's against powers and principalities warfare. So he says, when you're engaging in warfare, we don't fight the way the world does. On the contrary, the weapons that we have have divine power to demolish strongholds. And that's a lofty phrase, kind of. What's that mean, to demolish strongholds? Well, real simple, that in, in every warfare, the opposing army is trying to get a strong hold in their opposition's territory, right? So they can fortify that area and make it a stronghold and eventually conquer. How, does they, how do they get a stronghold? They get a stronghold through sneaking in and making a way into enemy territory and you know, we are the enemy of the evil one. So it tries to come in and, and just get a foothold Get a foothold. Now think about this with your own thinking. The enemy of your soul wants to just get a foothold in that that lie. And then as you think about that lie, you're no good. Whatever whatever it is, you're not going to make it. Your marriage is over. Your health is going to suffer. Whatever that lie is, that as you meditate on that and that you allow that to become yours and you rehearse that, that foothold then grows and morphs into a stronghold on you. A stronghold. And we can all, all suffer with these. Nobody will ever love me. It could be a, a lie. This thing that comes... And remember, he always uses some sort of past, and something from our past to say, you'll never make it, whatever. And uh, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm ugly. I'm worthless. I can't quit this addiction that I have. Whatever it is, I can never really be happy. Life can never really be good. And that... That lie that comes in when we tolerate it and we meditate on it and we allow it a residency in our mind, that foothold becomes a stronghold. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You have this in your own thinking. It's a stronghold a fear over this, anxiety over this, being so preoccupied with what other people think. And these things stem from other things. I realize that. But the enemy uses those things in our life to try to get a stronghold. How do we battle against the strongholds of the enemy? We recognize them first in our lives. How do we battle against that? Here's the weapons of our spiritual warfare. Number one, write this down. Know it. It's scripture. Scripture. Matthew chapter 4 tells the story of Jesus being... Uh, led into the wilderness, but in the wilderness he was tempted by the evil one. And as he was tempted by the evil one, those assaults were coming at him, the way he 
battled the evil one, the devil, was not through yelling or screaming or, you know, distraction or whatever else. The way he battled the evil one, as you may or may not know, he battled the evil one through referencing scripture. Scripture is essential. Ephesians 6, 17, God's word is an indispensable weapon. Why? Because God's word is truth. And truth is the only thing that can take down a lie. We have to bring truth into it. That first year in Bible college when, when I was, you know, hearing all these attacks that I, I do believe came from the enemy. Obviously, they had root in, in some insecurities in my life, but the enemy was bringing them in. You're not going to make it. You're going to fail. You're not going to make it as a Christian, let alone a minister. All of these things. I had to begin to start bringing truth and bringing scripture to my mind in order to combat this. I would do this. I would, this was before the day of iPhones and notes and stuff. So I would literally write scriptures down on index cards and commit them to memory. When I was standing in line somewhere, I'd commit this to memory. And then when the enemy would say to me something like, you know what, uh, God is not for you. God, God is not for you. You have done too much. You think this is so easy. You can just you know, forget every bad thing that you've done and just walk with God. You know? And I would have to say, because I would think those thoughts. And I'd have to say, you know what? Scripture says that he will never leave me, that he will never forsake me. When he would say, you're not going to make it, you were a failure in school. You didn't do good in school. You're not going to make it here now at this level. I would have to say, you know, the Scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this wasn't just some kind of fake declaration hype. No, my mind needed to be renewed because it had thought a harmful, destructive way about myself and about life for many years. And so my mind needed to get renewed. And how does our mind get renewed? By the word of God. And so I was bringing that up on and on and on. I believe many people, maybe yourself, I don't know, but many people come to Christ. They're this new creation. They've put their faith in the Lord for salvation, but they carry with them all this stinking thinking. All this old way of thinking all the time. And so our minds need to be renewed. My mind is still getting renewed. But how does it do it? By meditating on what is true. Let's continue. I want to continue with the passage we looked at just a minute ago. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We want those strongholds in our mind that are unhealthy to be demolished. We demolish arguments and every pretension, pay attention to this, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The enemy of your soul will try to get you to meditate on thoughts and lies and accusations that are contrary to the word of God, that are contrary to truth, that are false, right? And God is able to break down that stronghold. He has the power to break that addictive stronghold or that whatever, that fear stronghold in our lives. He has the power to do that. We have the power to do that in him, but we have to do our part. And that's be vigilant. Be mindful of what it is we're meditating on. What thoughts we're allowing to take residence in our minds. Whether we allow those and they build and they become strongholds or we bring them down. We cast them down. And what do we put in its place? How do you cast something down? The only way you cast something down is to raise something else up in its place. That's how we do this. I do this every day. Something comes in, it's a meditation. I know it's, I know it's of the evil one. I know it's not right. It doesn't, it, the, it, it's not going to produce something that's glorifying to God. It's going to make me angry or jealous or envious or something like that. I have to. I have a choice in it, but I know what I need to do. I have the, the power that comes from God to see this thing broke, but I have to choose to raise up a new meditation in its place. And I love this. I love this passage that speaks to this is what we're called to do. Philippians 4, 8, 9, he's saying, finally, brothers, sisters, hear me, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. 
Meditate on such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is what he's saying. Is that thought comes. In spiritual warfare, to a large part, there's more to it than we're talking about today, but to a large part, for your mind, is this battlefield right here of casting down arguments. You're never going to make it. That's not God's truth. So that thing that has tried to usurp the place of God's scripture, I need to recognize that and cast it down and put truth in its place. And at that point, when we learn to do that, that's how the peace of God begins to transcend our understanding and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That's the power of the scripture. And here's the other weapon that we have, and that's uh, prayer. <laughs> we can go to God in the midst of our battles, and I don't always battle right. I need to go to him for comfort, for clarity, for assistance. <laughs> prayer is absolutely essential. It's absolutely critical in, um, as my fight against the enemy. Ephesians 6, 18 says, in the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Prayer accomplishes a number of important things. Here's two things that we're going to look at as we close today, what it accomplishes. Number one is it keeps me connected to God in relationship. Again, my authority is derived from my connection, who I belong to. There's nothing as imperative. There's nothing as critical in my life, in my life as my connection to God in relationship. To know that I am loved by my heavenly father, to know that I am forgiven, to know that he likes me, that he wants me to come to him daily with my request. It keeps me, prayer keeps me connected to the one who is my source for victory. And the other thing that goes on is prayer keeps me oriented to truth. Because I don't know about you, but when, man, when the battle's raging in your mind, you know what I'm talking about, it's hard to have clarity. It gets confusing. We start wondering about this and being confused about this and fearful over these things. And it's just like, I need clarity. Where do we get clarity? We get clarity as we are, clarity as we are hid away in Christ. I have to do that so many times. I had to do that this morning already. Just come to God and go, Lord, I need you to raise up. I need you to raise up. And I love that scripture, let God arise and then let his enemies be scattered. These opposing thoughts, these fears, these anxieties, these worries, God rise. How does that happen? It's in prayer and talking and communicating with him. He loves us. He wants to secure freedom for you and I. In fact, I love this passage in Isaiah. You can make it one that you claim for yourself this week. The prophet says, no weapon that is formed against you will succeed. That's a promise. And you will condemn every tongue that accuses you in judgment. Those accusations in your mind. You can condemn them in Jesus' name. Pull them down. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication is from me. Hey, learn that lesson too. You, you, you're not responsible for your own vindication. Leave that to God. You battle for, with your own salvation, your own mental health, your own peace of God. Leave the vindication to God. As we close today, some of you, I know, are in a legitimate battle. Your mind is under attack. Your thoughts are all over the place. It just happens. It happens to all of us from time to time. Some of you are there today, and it's hard to get clarity. You're fighting. There's a battle going on for your your, your health, for your, your, your strength and your purpose, for your, your marriage, over your finances, over a child. And some of you are in this battle right now. There's two things I want you to do with me today before we close this service together, all right? It's not a quick fix. There's no battle that's won overnight. I'm just going to offer you two things so we can just practically experience this right now. So it's not theory. I want you to get a, a feel for it. And some of you who are really battling right now, I want you to do this with me. Even if you're not, this is still such a good exercise to do. Number one, first off, remind yourself right now. Just be quiet. Think about it. Remind yourself right now who you belong to. That you belong to God. The Lord is my shepherd. The Almighty. He's mine. I belong to Him. 
I received the spirit of adoption. He's my heavenly father. I am forgiven. I have mercy available to me. I have grace. That's how I live. I belong to him. Remind yourself of who you belong to and rest in that. Rest in that. And then secondly, and this is something you could do on a daily basis, evaluate your thoughts. Evaluate. What is it that I've been meditating on? Have I been allowing a foothold to grow into a stronghold? What's the lie, the accusation, the fear, the anxiety that I have meditated on? Maybe I've even enlisted other people to help even build it up, to make it bigger. And we have a choice in this. If that meditation, if that thought is contrary to the truth of God's word, then I need to bring that down. And how do I bring that down? That I am, you know, God doesn't care about me. Uh, I'm never going to make it. Whatever, the, I, I bring that down by lifting up truth. Whatever is right and noble and trustworthy and of a good report and excellent. Think upon these things. It's bringing the right meditations. It's bringing truth there. That's how God arises and his enemies scatter. We're going to close with a song. I love this song. It's called Sea of Victory. And it talks about how to find God in the midst of a battle. I want you to think about this song. There's a particular phrase in the song that I so love. It says, you take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. That's what he wants to do. Wherever you find yourself today, whatever's happened, he takes what the enemy meant for evil. He can't do anything about yesterday. But today's fresh. He wants to turn that around for good, right? Just like he, he did with me years ago and he's still doing with me now. What the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. That's what he wants to do in your life. I want to pray for you right now and then we're going to go into that song. I'm going to come back at the end of that song for just a little bit. Father, I pray for anyone who is uh, struggling right now, and especially during these times, we're all struggling, one degree or another. It's hard times. But I believe, Father, that in these times that you want to equip us, Lord, that we realize our dependence upon you. That there's some things we cannot change, but there's some things that we can by doing our part. So, Father, I thank you that all authority that's been given to Jesus, he's the head, but we are the church. And we have that authority. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us, help us, Lord, to, to wield the sword of the spirit, the word of God over these accusations and lies from the enemy, that we would stand on what is truth and not be carried away by the lies and the falseness of what the evil one brings our way. And this, all of this, it's not for our glory, Lord. I know you are passionate about each one of your children living life. You came to give life and life more abundantly. But we also want to live that abundant life, Lord, in order to, to bring glory to you. We thank you for that. Give us grace today to do that, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see you
what the enemy meant for evil and turns it to good. I, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen him do that, not only in my life, but in the lives of people I care very much about. What the enemy meant for evil, he turns it for good. That he's able to do that for those who are surrendered to him, that, that have given their lives to him. That's what he wants to do. If you have made a decision, say, yes, I want to walk with God. Lord, take my life. However you say that to him, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I give you my life. I surrender to you. I remember me telling him years ago, Lord, I don't want to do this without you. Take my life. If you do that, would you let me know? Simply text New Start to 67076 so that we can give you some material and walk with you. And I encourage you to plug into these services, plug into uh, our growth groups. And one of the cool things that we, we've been talking about is that uh, prayer walk app. It's called just that prayer walk app. And it's cool. Um, my wife and I have been doing it. I know a lot of you guys have been doing it and it, it, it maps where you're praying. We pray for all the neighborhoods in our area. It gives you prayer prompts to show you here, there's what you can pray. As you're not only praying for yourself, but for our community. It has a wonderful worship list on Spotify. So anyways, download that. It's free and it's available to you and it helps us connect with God and with each other in prayer. All right, you guys. Remember, we do have services in the month of November at 9.30 and 4 in the courtyard. Go to our website, hit upcoming events and schedule. Register, come and be a part of that. All right, we'd love to see you. God bless you. See you soon.